This is a very different video this week because I'm on holiday. I'm on the P&O cruise ship Iona and I want to talk about some of the sustainability initiatives and technologies that are on this ship and being applied to the cruise industry as a whole. Yeah, so this is a difficult one because clearly cruises and actually the whole shipping industry in general has an issue with pollution and waste. The dilemma I have here is that I am making huge efforts at home to reduce my carbon footprint. But for holidays, I really like cruises. I love relaxing on the ocean. I love waking up in a new destination every couple of days without having to pack up my luggage each time. I like short trips ashore to get a quick experience of that location, but then coming back to a safe and familiar space in the cabin. I've done quite a few cruises, but I'm well aware that this has a large environmental footprint. So assuming that I don't want to sacrifice this part of my lifestyle, what can I do about it? Well, that's one reason why we selected this ship, Iona, to travel on this year. Iona is one of the newest P&O ships. It's not the newest because Arvia has just been launched, but as far as I'm aware, they're basically using the same technologies. Most cruise ships use a type of fuel oil that's really cheap and dirty. It's used because ships need a huge amount of energy to get moving, and bunker fuel, as it's also known, is the cheapest of the cheap. But it's filthy stuff, and when burned in an engine, it pumps out sulfur dioxide and soot in huge amounts. If you've ever been on a ship, you'll have seen the brown smoke coming out of the funnels following the ship for miles. And if you happen to be up on deck around the funnels, you can sometimes smell and taste the exhaust fumes. It's, it's not nice. Iona and Arvia both use a different fuel, LNG, or liquefied natural gas. It's still a fossil fuel, but there's no getting away from that for a long time in shipping. In fact, from what I read about these engines, they are Mac Caterpillar dual fuel ones, so still have the capability to use fuel oil if necessary. It's actually really difficult to find out specific engine information for these ships, so if I'm wrong about any of this, then please let me know in the comments along with your sources. Well, here's an unscripted little extra bit for this video. While I was out recording this video talking about sustainability technologies and LNG, I noticed through the funnels there was a lot of black smoke coming out of it, which means that the uh, engineers have decided they're going to burn some bunker fuel instead of LNG today, which is a bit of a disappointment, but never mind. At the moment, the technologies to go totally green are just not there yet. A Norwegian company announced a couple of months ago that they are building a fully electric cruise ship but that won't enter service until 2030 and can only carry about 500 passengers anyway. That's a long way away and will probably be unaffordable for most people including me but a few weeks ago China launched a fully electric container ship so maybe it's getting closer. So LNG isn't the shipping silver bullet, it's basically methane which is a greenhouse gas and there are concerns about it leaking into the atmosphere potentially causing more damage than it is supposed to fix. But LNG is expensive, financially it doesn't make sense to let your engines leak it out, it's in the company's best bottom line interests to make sure that doesn't happen. So assuming that economics takes care of that, I have to say I reckon on balance LNG is at the moment better for the environment than using bunker fuel. So ships use energy. Energy comes from the generators. The generators are powered by LNG and LNG costs money. If the ship uses less energy, we use less LNG. So this ship has some clever energy saving technologies on board to help with that. Firstly, ships need to travel places and Iona and Arvia have a special reduced drag hull design. If there's less drag through the water, then you need less fuel to keep it moving. One of the main things you can do on a cruise is eat. You can literally eat 24 seven if you wanted to. If one restaurant is closed, somewhere else will be open or you can order room service. That means the kitchens or galleys as they're called on ships are always running. Galleys need ventilation and ventilation uses energy. Iona has a smart ventilation system installed called Marvel. It's a demand control system, which is pretty cool. It has sensors that scan the area to see if appliances are on and if you're cooking there. It'll then control the amount of ventilation in that specific area based on that information. But there's also another issue caused by having all of that food available, waste. Carnival have started installing two pieces of technology to their ships to help with that. The first are dehydrators that basically squeeze all of the water out of the food waste which means that there's less waste mass to transport, so the waste is lighter and uses less fuel to carry around. 
That's quite old technology and has been around for a while, but they're also now installing biodigesters, and they've installed over 600 of these so far. These break down food waste into what is basically a liquid form, and they filter out all of the non-biological waste like plastic too. The old way of dealing with food waste was to either incinerate it or just dump it at sea, so this method is a massive improvement. Carnival Corporation, who are the parent company of P&O Cruises, also have what they're calling the Service Power Package, and they're rolling this out across all of their ships. The aim is to reduce fuel consumption by up to 10% per ship, so not only is this an improvement environmentally, but it also makes financial sense for them really. They don't need to pass the monetary saving on to the passengers because they're going to sell out anyway. The improvements cover things like upgrading the HVAC system, so heating, cooling, ventilation. That's for both the living areas and places like the engine rooms. They're making sure that they're using LED lighting everywhere, which they state actually has a knock-on effect of reducing the need for quite so much air conditioning because the bulbs run cooler. They're also using smarter remote monitoring systems so they can keep things working at peak efficiency. So to summarise, basically what I'm trying to say is that if you want to keep cruising as a part of your lifestyle, but also want to reduce your environmental impact, then your choice of ship can have a big effect on that. Hopefully over the next few years, and sadly it will take years, more cruise ships will switch to cleaner fuels and become more efficient in their use of energy. Maybe even we'll see new leaps in electrification technology, which I really hope we do. Anyway, please go and give this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more from me. Thank you for watching, goodbye.